Welcome to this week's TDD Weekly Report for the week ending November 19th. I'll try to keep it to three subjects because I know with the holidays coming in, the viewership is going to drop off, but that's okay. Time to celebrate the holidays and be with family and friends. But for my science geeks that are going to stick with me, Popular Science has an article about drug resistance bacteria is no match for clay from Canada. Antibiotic resistant bacteria pose a serious threat to public health often infecting vulnerable populations like hospital patients, but researchers in British Columbia may have found a solution that was hiding just below their feet all along clay. It says the researchers tested the clay's reaction to a group of bacteria collected known as ESKAPE, escape pathogens, and I'm not going to pronounce the real long word. You can read it in the article, and as usual, all the links will be down below. But it says infections caused by the escape bacteria are essentially untreatable, and contribute to increasing mortality in hospitals, says Julian Davies, co-author of the study and microbiologist at the University of British Columbia. It says researchers incubated various strains of pathogens with clay samples or only with water as a control and found that 16 strains of the bacteria samples died when incubated with clay. And the clay's name is called Kisselmeat, and it comes from a deposit northwest of Vancouver and has been used by Aboriginal Canadians for several centuries to treat ulcerative colitis, stomach ulcers, arthritis, and skin irritation. So a lot of times we think the old people and the old methods and the old ways are uh, more superstition than science, but sometimes they knew what they were doing. And another one about medicine, too, from popular science. Forget the EpiPen. It's time for an Epi pill. And this is kind of interesting, too, not just the uh, development of the thing, but I'll, I'll talk to you about it in a minute here. Um, last month, the Congressional Committee tore into Mylan CEO Heather Bresch the charge jacking up the price of EpiPens, her company's signature pro uh, product. Those price hikes left some allergy sufferers without access to emergency epinephrine. Uh, Mylan has the patent on uh, not the epinephrine, but the way to deliver it. And uh, evidently now this scientist has come up with a way. Um, he designed a pill that works a bit like an orally disintegrating tablet, or ODT. They're meant to be held on the top of the tongue until they're dissolved, but his version you're supposed to hold underneath your tongue. Now it doesn't quite deliver as huge of a dose so what they do is uh, they up the dose to 20 milligrams instead of 0.3 so you can still get the right amount of uh, dosage into your system by holding it under your tongue and uh, they said but despite that too I mean the fact that it's a lot easier to use and I didn't realize this too but it actually says here that 16, only 16% 16 of patients use the EpiPen device correctly. Most fail to jam it hard enough into their leg or didn't hold it in place for the recommended 10 seconds. So the effectiveness of uh, any kind of system like that depends on you know how well it's uh, delivered. So if uh, this thing can be three or four times more effective, even at the higher dose, to still get the 0.3 milligram dose you need, could be something well worth it. It says if it worked, the Epi tablet could be a game changer for people with severe allergies, but it's premature to get excited, says Robert Wood, an allergist. It's a good idea. We'd love to have it. Patients would love to have it. There's a lot of appeal, but the risk of it not working is that people die. So I, I think that means there's a lot more testing to do. It's just in the preliminary stages. But if they do get it to work, evidently it uh, will last for seven years, whereas the EpiPens, I guess they expire a lot faster than that. I think they expire in a year or something like that. These things will have a seven-year shelf life so hopefully they get it down I mean uh, don't call up your uh, pharmacist today to try to look for it but I think it's something maybe we can look for in the future save people a little bit of money too for businesses using social media this is from sciencedaily.com for businesses using social media posts with high engagement have the greatest impact on customer spending I don't know about a lot of you guys but I have actually chosen to spend money on maybe one product over another based on a friend of mine giving a review or even not necessarily a friend just somebody I follow on uh, Facebook or YouTube or something like that give a good review on a product that I want to purchase like um, say a hunting knife or something like that and somebody gives a good review and if I'm in the market for the hunting knife I would probably much prefer to buy the one recommended by the person than just take a chance on the reviews on Amazon or something like that. But it says here, a neutral or even negative social media post with high engagement will impact sales more than a positive post, post that draws no likes, comments, or shares. I think that's true across the board too. Like they say, a, a negative comment uh, or review on a business will lose you like 12 customers, whereas a, a positive uh, comment or review will gain you three customers. So I have noticed as I've done shopping on Amazon, it seems like the last two or three times I've given something a low star review, 
I've been contacted within an hour to where the, the people that are selling the product want to make it right. And uh, I think in every single case, they've satisfied me and corrected the problem. So they've got people out there on Amazon, I think, that are watching the reviews hour by hour. Uh, the researchers studied data from a large specialty retailer with multiple locations in the United States. They combined data about customer participation and the company's social media page with in-store purchases before and after the retailer um, did the online uh, did the effort to reach out to people online. Um, the clear message here, well, let's see right here. I'll, I'll read the statistics here too. It says the study also found that businesses' social posts significantly strengthened the effect of traditional television and email marketing effects. When social media was combined with the TV marketing, customers' spending increased by 1.03% and cross-buying by 0.84%. Cross-buying means like uh, say you buy a camera from a, a retailer and then you also buy a lot of accessories to go with it too. Maybe some other lenses, maybe a, a carrying case, something like that. So when combined with email uh, marketing, the customer spending increased by 2.02%. So that can actually be the difference between a store's profitability and that. A lot of times uh, stores fail just because year by year they lose 2% uh, of profit that uh, could have kept them afloat. So anyway, the clear message says here, the clear message here is that social media marketing matters and managers should embrace it in their relationships. And like I said, I noticed they're really embracing it in a big way on Amazon. If you uh, leave a low star rating on certain products, uh, they get back to you and they say, hey, tell us what we can do. We'll replace it, give you new, whatever you'd like. Just, you know, give us a chance. And I, in fact, as I've made purchases, I've gotten emails from the people that I've purchased from saying, Please, before you leave a two-star or a three-star rating, contact us first and let us give us the chance to make it right before leaving a, real, a low rating on us uh, and our products. So, yeah. So, anyway, those three articles and all the links will be down below. And I hope everybody has a nice Thanksgiving, and I will catch you next week.